Hi, this is Tech Tips with Brittany, and a lot of us have found our groove working from home because we've had to, and some of the things you've learned how and maybe don't know why they're working. And then maybe there are a few places that you still haven't quite found your groove. I'm mostly gonna talk about the environment. So if you've had a hard time focusing at home, but had an easy time at the office, there might have been some environmental cues that helped you get into the mode of working. In the before times, you might have gone into your office. You physically walk in, there's a different sense of light, there's a different sense of atmosphere, there are different smells, tones, sounds, you're in a different place. And if you've been working there for any amount of time, you've probably built up an association between those sensory factors and getting work done. It helps cue your brain that it's time to work. We so often think of ourselves as these very logical creatures, and it's amazing how many really basic, just sensory cues help trigger our brain. There are some very tragic examples of this, but I'm not gonna be a buzzkill, so I'll talk about some silly ones. Have you ever heard anybody talk about taking a test underwater? Some cognitive scientists did some really interesting tests. They took certified scuba divers and had them study for an exam underwater. And then half of those scuba divers ended up taking the test they had studied for on land and half of them underwater. Taking a test underwater doesn't seem like an optimal environment to me, but the people who had studied underwater performed better underwater. It's because the environment matched the one that they were studying in. It cued their brain that, oh right, you might need the same kind of information right now. The same thing can work when we're not feeling in the mood to work on something yet. Having triggers that say, oh no, no, it is time to work, it's okay, may help lower the resistance and make it easier to get started on a task. The great news from classical conditioning and Pavlov's dogs are that we can pair up certain stimuli with working and then almost feel in the mood to work or at least less in the mood to not work. Even if you don't already have certain sensory stimuli that triggers you to work, you can start pairing those right away. Then, after a while, you can build into the habit, no, really, I'm working now. Depending on what home automations you already have set up in your home, if any, your triggers might look very different from these. So I'm just gonna show you an example with what I have set up. Okay, so let's open shortcuts. I'm gonna start a new shortcut. And I'm gonna first start with auditory. I'm gonna play a playlist, it's pretty basic. I'm gonna type in music and see what there is. Looks like what I wanna do is get a playlist. So I'm gonna look at my playlist. And I actually have a getting business done playlist. And then I'm gonna have another thing set to play music. Under show more, you can hit shuffle or repeat. I'm not gonna have those on because at least for me, part of what's going to trigger my brain to feel like working is going to be the same things happening in the same sequence. That tells my brain, oh, get ready, it's time to work. At least after I've paired it a few times. So the next thing I'm going to do is change the color of my hue lights. I personally use an app called iConnect Hue for a lot of my automations. So I am going to load in focus. What that means is it's going to change my light color to my focus lights. The next thing I wanna add is starting a toggle timer, which I use for time tracking. In order to see the actions for toggle and a few other apps, one of the things you sometimes have to do is go into the app and do the action a few times in order for that suggestion to appear in shortcuts. I know it's weird. So I've done that with the timer I wanna start. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the start send emails timer. And you're gonna have it show when it runs or not. I don't need it to. Now because I decided that for my taste and smell sensory input, I'm going to use tea Earl Grey hot. I'm gonna start a tea timer as part of this. So I'm gonna search for timer. Start a timer. Obviously not 30 minutes, I'm not crazy. I'm going to steep my Earl Grey for two minutes. Of course, I also need to add in a cue for myself to put the tea in the cup. So I'm going to set an alert. 
show alert. So it actually needs to go above the starting my tea timer. And I don't want the cancel button on. Now that I'm looking at this, I actually probably don't want to start my toggle timer until I've actually put my T in to start. So I'm going to move that down below the alert. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the app that I use for my Pomodoro timing. So I'm going to search for open. And this allows me to open any app that I want. Something to be careful with here is that when you use the open app action, if you don't come back to the shortcut in a shockingly short amount of time, a lot of times the entire shortcut times out and won't continue on. That doesn't matter, however, if it's like in this one where it's the very last thing in the shortcut. The thing that's left to do is to actually select the app for Pomodoro. Because I like to customize my Pomodoro timers beyond what they normally allow for, I actually use an interval training timer that's intended for workouts to use for routines and timers and things like that. I actually frequently use Intervals Pro because it'll let me open up a specific timer, but I don't currently have that set up right now. So I'm just gonna have it open up the app. And there we go. It's enough that I don't have to remember each little step. It's going to grab the songs from a playlist I've already made to start work. It'll play the playlist. It's going to start up my lights in the way that I'm used to it. It's gonna send me an alert that says to start my tea so I don't have to remember that step. Start a timer for my tea so I know when to take the tea bag out. Start my time tracking timer in toggle so that I can track how I'm spending my time. And then it's going to open up the app that I'm using for a Pomodoro. And I'll be ready to go. Something you could fairly easily do and swap out a few of the actions on here would be to start yourself a break shortcut as well. What are the environmental cues that tell you to relax and wind down for a few minutes before you get back to work? It might be worth exploring. So what alterations would I make if I were making this into a break timer? Well, I'm probably gonna have a different playlist playing. Maybe I'm gonna start playing some musicals. And instead of my focus lights, I'm actually gonna load in my relax lights. I might still keep my tea timer on though. And instead of my starting work timer, maybe I'll put on my stretch timer. I'm probably going to leave in that it ends on my interval timer that I use for a Pomodoro. And that's because I need to know when my break's going to be over. <laughs> There's my shortcut to help me get ready for work and get in the mood to get started and get going. Thanks so much, I'll see you next time. Hi, this is Brit right out of the gate. Would you like me to be faster and more intense? Yeah. Okay. Faster.